Biotechnology is the manipulation of organisms of their genetic components to solve problems and make useful products. Biotechnology depends on many DNA techniques. There are three fundamental DNA techniques in which most biotechnology procedures are based off of. Bacterial restriction endonucleases, also known as restriction enzymes, cleave DNA at specific location. They are originally a mechanism of bacterial defense against viruses. Another fundamental DNA technique involves the production of a label probe, also known as nucleic acid hybridization. A probe is a DNA or RNA fragment complementary to a DNA being studied. It is commonly labeled fluorescently or radioactively. The third fundamental technique is gel electrophoresis, which is used to separate DNA or RNA fragments according to their size. DNA samples are loaded into wells at one end of a gel, and an electron current is applied to pull them through the gel. Since DNA fragments are negatively charged, they've moved towards the positive electrode. Smaller fragments move through the gel faster than larger ones. Molecular cloning or recombinant DNA technology involves the insertion of a DNA fragment into a cloning vector, producing a recombinant DNA. Molecular cloning involves four main steps. First, type 2 restriction endonucleases cleave both DNA fragment of interest and the cloning vectors, which are a small carrier molecule of DNA capable of self-replication at precise locations known as restriction sites. Common cloning factors include plasmids, which are small circular DNA molecules that replicate separately from the bacterial chromosome, bacterial artificial chromosomes, abbreviated as box, which are useful for cloning larger segments of DNA, and yeast artificial chromosomes, abbreviated as YAKs, which are useful for expressing eukaryotic genes. In the second step, DNA ligase joins DNA fragment of interest to the cloning factor covalently, creating recombinant DNAs. The base pairing of complementary sticking ends greatly facilitates ligation reaction. Next, the cloning factor with recombinant DNA is inserted into the host cell. The most common method in bacteria is transformation, which is the uptake of naked DNA. The insertion of recombinant DNA into eukaryotic host involves either electroporation, which is a brief electrical pulse that creates temporary holes, or microinjection, which injects DNA using microscopically thin needles. The last step involves clone selection, which is to select host cells that contain recombinant DNA. In positive selection, only cells that contain a specific gene survive, whereas in negative selection, cells that have lost a specific gene survive. Clone selection methods include antibiotics such as tetracycline and ampicillin. Another method involves XGAL, which is a homolog of lactose. When laxi gene, which codes for beta-galactosidase, is present, it cleaves lactose into an intensely blue product, which is insoluble. And when laxi gene is absent, XGAL is not cleaved, therefore remains white. DNA library is a collection of DNA clones gathered for purposes of genome sequencing, gene discovery, or determination of gene or protein function. A genomic library is a collection of the total genomic DNA from a single organism, whereas a complementary DNA or cDNA library is made by cloning DNA made in vitro by reverse transcription of all the mRNA produced by a particular cell. Therefore, a cDNA library represents only part of the genome, only the subset of genes transcribed into mRNA in the original cells. A labeled probe can be used to screen a DNA library to identify gene of interest. DNA microarray, also known as DNA chip, is a collection of microscopic DNA spots attached to a solid surface that allow rapid and simultaneous screening of many genes. Each spot contains short pieces of DNA fluorescent probes that will bind to complementary DNA sequences and be detected by a reader. Each light usually corresponds to a specific genotype. DNA microarray can reveal the genes that are expressed at a given stage in the organism's development or under a particular set of environmental conditions. The label probes can also be synthesized from mRNAs, creating cDNA microarray for gene expression profiling. On the other hand, fluorescence in situ hybridization, abbreviated as FISH, uses fluorescent dyes attached to nucleic acid probes to identify the location of either DNAs or mRNAs in place in a portion of a tissue, therefore the term in situ. FISH is often used for genetic counseling.
The nuclease protection assay is a technique used to identify specific mRNA. RNA molecules are first hybridized with DNA probes to form DNA-RNA hybrids. The mixture is then exposed to S1 nuclease that specifically cleaves only single-stranded RNA but have no activity against double-stranded RNA. The surviving RNAs are those complementary to a DNA probe. Nuclease protection can be used to map introns and indicate level of transcription. Southern blotting or northern blotting combines gel electrophoresis of DNA or RNA fragments with nucleic acid hybridization to identify gene of interest. First, restriction endonucleases cleave DNA or RNA strands into smaller fragments. Next, gel electrophoresis separates DNA or RNA fragments by size. The third step involves DNA or RNA transfer, known as blotting. In southern blotting, DNA gel is placed into an alkaline solution to denature the double-stranded DNA for nucleic acid hybridization later on. A sheet of natural cellulose membrane is placed on top of the gel. Pressure is applied evenly to the gel to transfer the DNA onto the positively charged natural cellulose membrane. The membrane is then heated or exposed to UV radiation to permanently attach the transferred DNA. The next step involves nucleic acid hybridization. The membrane with the transferred DNA is exposed to either radioactively or fluorescently labeled DNA probe, which are once again DNA sequences complementary to the gene of interest. The gene of interest is now hybridized with a label probe. Nucleic acid probes alone can also be applied to hybridize with mRNAs transcribed from a gene to identify where or when a gene is transcribed in an organism. The last step involves probe detection. Excess probe is washed off from the membrane, and the pattern of hybridization is visualized on X-ray film by autoradiography. Polymerase chain reaction, abbreviated as PCR, amplifies specific DNA sequence to study in detail. It involves a three-step cycle, denaturation, annealing, and elongation. During denaturation, the DNA is heated to separate the strands. During annealing, synthetic oligonucleotide primers are added to bind to the separated strands. During extension, thermostable DNA polymerases catalyze 5' to 3' DNA synthesis. After n rounds of PCR, 2 to the nth power of DNA copies are produced. Therefore, polymerase chain reaction requires DNA of interest, synthetic primers, deoxynucleoside triphosphates, abbreviated as DNTPs, and heat-stable DNA polymerase such as TAC polymerase. Reverse transcriptase PCR, abbreviated as RT-PCR, uses RNA as a template to synthesize DNA. It can be used to detect sequences derived from living cells, which are transcribing their DNA into RNA. Real-time quantitative reverse transcriptase PCR determine relative concentrations of a particular RNA molecule in a cell under different environmental conditions. Reproductive cloning, also known as organismal cloning, involves nuclear transplantation, in which the nucleus of an fertilized egg cell or zygote is placed with the nucleus of a differentiated cell. However, only a small percentage of cloned embryos have developed normally to birth due to epigenetic changes that must be reversed in the nucleus from a donor animal in order for genes to be expressed or repressed appropriately for early stages of development. Genetic engineering is the process of using recombinant DNA technology to alter the genetic makeup of an organism. One aspect of genetic engineering involves genome editing. Knock-in refers to gene insertion at a specific locus. Knock-out refers to gene deletion at a specific locus. And knock-down refers to reduced expression of a gene. The Craylock system consists of the Cray recombinase that recombines a pair of short target sequences called the lock sequences, which allow gene knock-in or knock-out. RNA interference or RNAi involves synthetic double-stranded RNA molecules that matches the sequence of a particular gene to break down or block the gene's mRNA, resulting in gene knockdown. Transcription activator-like effector nucleases, abbreviated as TALENS, involves nucleases that have a DNA binding domain and a DNA cleaving domain. TALENS can be designed to cleave a specific sequence, which will then be fixed by the cell's non-homologous end joining mechanism introducing insertion or deletion errors at the repair site. Talons can be used for knockout, knock-in, and knockdown. CRISPR or cluster regularly interspaced short palindromic repeats are genetic elements that bacteria use as a kind of acquired immunity to protect against viruses. They are short sequences that originate from viral genomes and have been incorporated into bacterial genome. CAS or CRISPR-associated proteins process these sequences and cut matching viral DNA sequences.
Eukaryotic genome can be cut at desired position by introducing plasmids containing Cas genes, and specially constructed CRISPRs. There are four broad categories for applications of biotechnology. For environmental applications, genetic engineering can be used to modify the metabolism of microorganisms to extract minerals from the environment or degrade potentially toxic waste materials. Biofuels make use of crops such as corn, soybeans, and cassava to replace fossil fuels. For agricultural applications, genetic engineering creates genetically modified organisms, abbreviated as GMO plants, with desirable traits such as delayed ripening, resistance to spoilage, resistance to diseases, pests, and droughts. Genetically modified plants are created through the T plasmid. On the other hand, genetic engineering of transgenic animals speeds up the selective breeding process. There are three main types of medical applications. Molecular cloning can be used to synthesize pharmaceutical products on a larger scale. Host cells in culture can be engineered to secrete proteins as they are made, including insulin, human growth hormones, and vaccines. Transgenic animals are made by introducing genes from one species into the genome of another animal. They serve as pharmaceutical factories that produce large amounts of medical drugs. For example, transgenic goats secrete antithrombin. Gene therapy refers to the introduction of genes into an afflicted individual for therapeutic purposes. Normal allele of a defected gene could be inserted into somatic cells of the tissue affected by the disorder. Bone marrow cells, which replicate throughout life, are ideal candidates for gene therapy. Retroviruses are used to insert normal version of allele back into the bone marrow. The third type of medical applications involves disease diagnosis and analysis. A primary method for disease diagnosis involves a combination of RFLP analysis and PCR. Genetic disorders can be tested for using genetic markers, such as single nucleotide polymorphisms, abbreviated as SNPs which are single base pair sites that vary in the population. When a restriction enzyme is added, single nucleotide polymorphisms result in DNA fragments with different lengths, known as restriction fragment length polymorphism, abbreviated as RFLP. PCR can be used to amplify RFLP or other useful infected agent in blood or tissue samples by using primers that target the genes associated with the disorders. Both DNA microarray and fluorescent in situ hybridization or FISH can be used to analyze diseases. DNA microarray can be used to compare patterns of gene expression in different tissues at different stages of diseases. FISH or fluorescence in situ hybridization can detect genetic abnormalities associated with cancer. The last type of biotechnology application involves genetic profiling. A genetic profile is an individual's unique DNA sequence and can be obtained by analysis of tissue or body fluid. Genetic profiles can be used in forensics to compare a suspect's profile to DNA evidence as well as for paternity testing. A combination of RFLP and southern blotting was used early on. Even more sensitive is the use of genetic markers called short tendon repeats, abbreviated as STRs, which are variations in number of repeats of a specific DNA sequence. PCR and gel electrophoresis are then used to amplify and identify short tendon repeats of different lengths. The probability that two people who are not identical twins have the same STR markers is exceptionally small.